It's me, the almighty green leaf. Well, I'm here to tell you that I'm somewhat back. I've been having internet troubles, mostly bills not being paid and whatnot, but that's beside the point. Furthermore, I found a new way of recording my voice. Well, I figured out my iPod. Anyway, I'm here to tell you I've got a few story updates. First off, the alternate ending... No. The sequel to the alternate ending of Rainbow Factory... E, that's my version... Is finished. Thing is, it's taken so long to upload... Because... Within the process of writing... Of working on that, and... When I said to... I was gonna... Uh, upload it, I think. I, uh, ran into a new story, which unfortunately conflicts with that story. So luckily enough, I'm here to read said story to you. Oh yes, and all this will be up on my fanfiction. Um, I guess I'll put the link in. Anyway, a new story. Royal Colors. In this story, well, unless the title already gives it away, I'm fairly sure it doesn't. This story makes it say that Celestia is Rainbow Dash's mom. Yep, you heard me right. Dash is royalty. <clears throat> anyway, I got the idea. Um, I was on one of my Facebook groups, and uh, one of my friends had um, shared the image of like Celestia and Rainbow Dash, and Rainbow Dash was a blank blank. So, anyway... I decided, hmm, this image gives me inspiration. Time to write a story! Anyway, hey, so today that's what I'm going to do. Read you Royal Colors by me. Anyway, I've split it into chapters, you know. Helps, you know, I guess. Anyway, uh, let me just check something here. Sure, it's all here. Okay, let's get started. Royal Colors by me, Greenleaf. Chapter 1 15 years ago. A woman crying, that's all we hear is a woman crying. Then she says, Go, please, go. Another voice, younger, much younger, asks, Will I ever be able to come back? One's voice replies, Maybe someday. We then hear hooves walk across the surface that sounds like tile and then stop. Then we hear the sound of beating wings that quickly become fainter and fainter. Then the woman's voice says, Never forget. I'll always love you d today. Dash! I yelled into a rainbow Dash's mind. Uh, side note. All alicorns are telepathic. They just choose not to use this power due to invasion of privacy. I use it only under permission, and when I do, I prefer not to snip around people's memories. Makes them feel weird, and also, you know, spoilers, or something like that. <laughs> anyway, she popped up from on her bed at my wake up, then rubbed her eyes, and using the telepathic link I had made with her, she replied, You know I hate it when you do that. You told me to wake you up if you slept too late by any means necessary. I meant using a bucket of water or something, not, not yelling into my head, she replied. I'll try to keep that in mind, I said in a sarcastic tone. Now hurry up and get ready, I said. You do remember what today is, right? Grandma Dash's eyes lit up and she dashed out of her bed and started racing around her house. As she was doing this, she said, Aw, oh, yeah! Today's the day that the Warner Bolts have auditions in Philadelphia. And if I leave now, I can get a head start before every pony else. That's right, I replied. While you're doing that, Twilight, myself, and the rest of the girls are going to visit Princess Celestia again. Twilight wants to hoof deliver another letter to her. Cool, Rainbow Dash replied. Well, I'd better get going. Don't want to be late. Oh, and you can get out of my head now. I chuckled and replied. <laughs> All right, we'll see you when you get back. I broke the connection and turned to Twilight, who was ready. We walked outside the library to see every pony else waiting to go. We made our way down to the train station and got on the train to Canterlot. Along the way, I began thinking. When I mentioned Princess... When I mentioned the princess to Rainbow, something in her mind lit up. Ah, uh, it's probably nothing. She's probably just remembering the gala, which is uh, the second one that uh, the main six go to, which is my first. 
She nearly got Soren asleep with her by luring him into a private room using Pi. Luckily enough, we found out what she was planning before it was too late. After we caught her, she apologized to Soren, and to our surprise, he said that wasn't the first time some pony had tried. He forgave Dash, and the gala went on without any more problems. Well, except for Pinky breaking out into another song, but that was more fun than a problem. Since she did this at the last gala, some of the Camelot ponies actually loosened up. In fact, I think I might have seen Photo finish dancing. As well as Fancy Pants in Florida Lee. Leaf! Twilight called. I snapped out of my reminiscing to realize that we had arrived in Camelot. Are you coming along? Twilight asked. Sorry, I replied. Got lost in my thoughts. I followed after Twilight, and we headed up to the Royal Palace. We headed in and went to the Royal Throne Room. We saw the princess sitting on the throne, to which she asked, Hello, every pony. What brings you all here today? I wanted to hoof deliver another letter to you, princess, Twilight responded. She floated up her letter to the princess, who took it and gave Twilight a list of spells. We were about to leave, when out of the blue, I asked, Princess, did you ever have any suitors? Princess looked a bit startled by my question, to which she asked, Whatever do you mean? I mean, did you have any suitors? I replied, you know, guys asking you out. I mean, I resumed, but I but looked back towards Twy and said, No offense, Twy. And I looked back towards the princess and said, But, Princess, even now you're hot. Princess blushed a bit and said, Well, thank you for the compliment. Princess then put her hoof to her chin and thought, uh, then said, Now that I think about it, there were a few who took interest in me, but there was, all, but there was one who I really had interest in. But now we were all very intrigued. Before the princess continued her story, she asked, Where's Rainbow Dash? Warner Bold Editions in Philadelphia, I replied. Should be back for a few hours. Good, the princess replied. Because the name of the stallion that caught my eye was Blitzius Dash. Dun, dun, dun! <clears throat> Chapter 2 We were all dumbstruck! I swear, it was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. B Blitzius Dash? As in, I asked, Rainbow Dash's father, Princess Celestia finished. But then that means that, I started thinking all this out. If you like Rainbow Dash's father, and we've never seen him before, then that can only mean... My eyes grew wide as I figured out the final part. That your Rainbow Dash's mom? The princess didn't give us a reply, but instead gave a small smile. And that means that Rainbow Dash is royalty? I asked. Rainbow Solarian Dash, the princess replied. But she'll always be my little dashy to me. So how did this happen? I asked. Well, the princess said, it all began 16 years ago, on the night of the Grand Galloping Gala. So, begins the flashbacks. It was a typical night, the princess began. Being able to temporarily get away from my duties to greet the guests was a real stress reliever. I greeted the guests with a typical welcome, but there was one stallion, as I've already said, who caught my eye. Blitzius, I replied, to which the princess nodded. He was quite handsome, Blitzius, the princess started again. He had a blue coat and a mane uh, and tail of red and orange and blue. The princess started staring out, probably remembering Blitzius. The princess quickly snapped out of her daze and continued her story. Yes, that was a fun night, the princess said. In fact, that was the night I conceived Rainbow Dash. A few of us were in shock, myself included. Well, we were shocked, not in shock. Blitz Blitzius and I got engaged about a month after the gala, the princess resumed. Then, nine months later, not only did we have a bouncing bundle of rainbow colored joy, but we also got married. Once again, some of us were shocked. But the princess continued her story anyway. In fact, I remember when Rainbow Dash was just a year old, and I tried to get her to wear a princess dress. 
Now the real flashbacks begin. No! Philly Rainbow Dash said. We could see her and Princess Celestia standing across from each other in one of the towers of the palace. Oh, come on, sweetie, Princess Celestia said. Beside her, she was holding up a pink princess dress with the magic. No way, Philly Rainbow Dash said. It's too girly and way uncool. I'll get laughed at if I'm seen in it. Then we hear the sound of beating wings and hear the sound of hooves hitting tile and a male voice asking, Now what's going on here? At this point, we can only see the stallion's legs. Philly Rainbow Dash then spun around and yelled, Daddy! and ran towards the stallion that had just landed and clutched his leg. Hello, my dear Blitzius, Celestia said to the stallion. We can now see Blitzius' face and not, his, not just his legs. Celestia, my love, Blitzius replied. Blitzius then looked down towards, towards Philly Rainbow Dash, ruffled her mane and said, Hey there, kiddo. Philly R.D. smiled and Blitzius asked, so what's going on here? Here I was, flying around town, you know, saying hi to every pony. When I get back, there's a whole bunch of ruckus coming from this room. Mommy wants me to wear a big puffy princess dress, Billy Rainbow Dash replied. But I won't because it's girly and uncool. Oh yeah? Blitzius asked. He then noticed that above the dress, Celestia was holding up a tiara that had a lightning bolt on the front of it. What about the tiara? Blitzius asked. Philly Rainbow Dash shook her head and said, No way! Although she hadn't seen the tiara yet. Oh, come on, Blitzius persisted. Philly Rainbow Dash turned around, her mouth open to say no again. But instead, she closed her mouth and looked at the tiara. There were a few moments of silence while Philly Rainbow Dash looked at the tiara. Then, with a bit of hesitation in her voice, she said, Oh, all right. Blitzius took the tiara from Celestia and placed it on Philly Rainbow Dash's head. She smiled and ran out of the room to show off her new headpiece. I'm still amazed at how you can do that, Celestia said to Blitzius. What? Blitzius asked. I've been trying to get that dress on her for hours, Celestia replied. Yet you're able to get her to wear a piece of it in five minutes. Blitzius just stared at Celestia. I swear, Celestia continued, she's got your stubbornness. Blitzius then replied, But she's got your beauty. Two exchanged small chuckles and smiled at each other. A flashback ended. We now go back to present day and Celestia is smiling. Those were happier days, she said. So what happened to Blitzius? This I asked. Celestia's smile changed from inch to a frown. She replied, He disappeared. None of us said anything, but the feeling of sorrow was in the air. I woke up one morning and rolled over in bed to find Blitzius gone. No note or anything, just gone. So it just started. Then another flashback began, showing Celestia waking up to find Blitzius gone. Now, of course, this did startle me, Celestia narrated. But, of course, Blitzius had warned me this, this might happen. The flashback went back even further to what appeared to be the day after Blitzius and Celestia got married. Looks like we're together forever, Blitzia said. However, hmm? Celestia looked at him and questioned. I may run morning errands, you know, get stuff out of the way. That way I can spend most of my time with you and Dashie. Thing is, these errands might take me a little while, so if I'm gone for a day, Blitzia said, there's no reason to be worried. I'm most likely off doing something. If I'm gone for two days, Blitzia continued, and that just means that whatever I'm doing is taking a little while longer than I expected. Finally, what you said. If I'm gone for three or more days, something's happened. Celestia's eyes widened, but Blitzius then said, Don't worry, I shouldn't be gone for three days. So I waited, Celestia continued. By the end of the first day, I was only slightly worried. But by the end of the second day, I was really worried. By the third day, I had the guards search Cantalot and Ponyville for Blitzius, but by late noon they had returned with no results, so I called the search off. By that time, I, Princess's eyes had started to water. We feared she might start crying, but she continued her story despite her tears. I nearly broke down. By that time, I realized I had lost two of the most important ponies in my life, and with just myself and Dashie. I wasn't going to risk losing her some way. 
So I went to find her home for her, where I knew she would be. A cloud castle? I asked. Celestia nodded. So I set her away to keep us safe, but it broke my heart to do so. Another flashback started, and we see Celestia crying. Then Philly Rainbow Dash walked in, a look of concern on her face. Mommy, what's wrong? She asked. Celestia sniffled and regained her composure. Dashie, he said, I need you to go somewhere for me. Remember that cloud castle we looked at earlier? Philly Rainbow Dash nodded. I need you to go stay there, Celestia said. For how long? Philly Rainbow Dash asked. Go, please, go, Celestia replied, her voice starting to crack. Will I ever be able to come back? Philly Rainbow Dash asked. Maybe someday, Celestia replied. Philly Rainbow Dash then smiled, turned around, and jumped out the tower and flew off. Never forget, Celestia said. I'll always love you, Dashie. The flashback ended, and we can now definitely tell that Celestia was about to cry. Um, a familiar voice said. Rainbow Dash hovered out from behind, the pil behind a pillar, much to Celestia's surprise. Chapter 3 Rainbow Dash, Celestia said. How long have you been there? Since you started the flashbacks, Rainbow replied. I got to the Wonderbolt auditions pretty early, so I was one of the first ones in. They saw my routine, said it was pretty good, and that they'd think about letting me in. Since I finished early, I figured I'd stop here and check up on every pony. But when you started, but when you started telling the story, I couldn't just show myself. I was afraid you wouldn't it'd stop. The two were then silent for a minute or two. But then Rainbow Dash flew into Celestia's hooves, and Celestia embraced Rainbow, which caused the two to burst into tears. In between sobs of happiness, Celestia said, Oh, Dashie, I'll never let you go ever again. It's truly a touching sight. During the, this time, Luna had come out to see what the commotion was about. By the time Luna had arrived, Celestia and Rainbow Dash had stopped crying. My sister, what causes you grief? Luna had asked. It's not grief, it's happiness, Celestia replied. For I've just had a small family reunion. Celestia was surely hu was still hugging Rainbow Dash, and Luna was observing this. With a commoner? Luna asked. Surely this mare, indicating Rainbow Dash, cannot be your foe. Celestia pushed Rainbow Dash's left ear back to reveal behind it a birthmark in the shape of a sun. Luna gave a gasp and asked, Gads, but how could this have happened? When could this have happened? I'm sorry I did not tell you, my sister, Celestia replied, but it happened during your banishment, and if I would have brought it up, it would have caused me too much sadness. So that means, Luna said, starting to put two and two together, that I'm an aunt? Celestia and Rainbow Dash smiled at Luna, who gave a weak chuckle and said, <laughs> I guess the fun has been doubled. You know, that's a really touching story, I said. But it's got me thinking, especially about Blitzius, more importantly his name. Like I've heard it before, but not directly. I started pacing, but then it finally hit me. I turned to Twilight and asked, Twilight, do you remember that stallion we met in the market last week when we were helping Applejack sell apples? Yeah, Shay's Dabletus, if I recall. He wore a cloak and his voice sounded funny, Twilight replied. I then turned around to Princess Celestia and asked, Princess, do you have a list of all the residents of Ponyville? <laughs> My dear Leaf, the princess replied, I have a list of every pony living in Equestria. I gave a weak chuckle, rubbed my hoof behind my head, and said, <laughs> Oh, yeah. But I do keep separate books for separate cities to keep everything organized, the princess then said. One of the guards brought me the book that held all the residents of Ponyville, and I began to flip through the book. I finally stopped on Shay's name and read the info out loud. Aha! Shay's Dabletus, 214 Unicorn Way, Ponyville, Equestria. Every pony stared at me to see what I was onto. Now then, I said, I'm about to blow your mind. I used my... 
I used my magic to copy Chase's name and floated it out of the book. I then started to rearrange the letters till they spelled a very familiar name. You see, I elaborated, Shay's Davlitis is really just an anagram for Blitzius Dash. What is an extra A in the name? Every pony gasped, and I looked at Rainbow Dash and asked, So what do you say, Dash? Why don't we go pay your dad a visit? So a few minutes later, we were in front of Blitzius' house. I knocked on the door, and it opened a crack to reveal Blitzius in his cloak. I also noticed on the door that there was a chain preventing the door from opening all the way, which indicated a lock. Hey, I remember you, Blitzius said. Twilight was right. His voice did sound weird. Something was influencing it. Hi, Shays. Could you let me in? I want to talk to you about something. Sure thing. Blitzius replied. He then closed the door, and on the other side we could hear numerous locks on the door unlocking. The door then opened, and Blitzius noticed every pony else. Oh, I see you brought the others. And, uh, Princess, too. Blitzius said. We all walked inside Blitzius' house. The room that we were in was somewhat dark, minus the light from coming from the open door. Beyond Blitzius, I noticed a table that, had so that held something tall and dome-shaped, covered with cloth. The guards that Celestia had brought with her turned around and stood in the doorway. Blitzius asked, So what did you want to talk about? We were just wondering what you were doing here, Blitzius, I said. Blitzius took a nervous step back and said, I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't hard to figure out that Shay's Dablitus was an anagram of Blitzius Dash with an extra A in it, I replied. Blitzius sighed and said, I guess I don't need this voice modulator box anymore. Blitzius then reached up to his neck pulled off a small metal box with a speaker on it, attached to a Velcro strap. Blitzius tossed the device aside, and then pulled off his hood. Celestia was right. Blitzius was pretty handsome. Blitzius then looked at Celestia and said, Celestia, you're looking as lovely as ever. Celestia blushed. Blitzius' voice now sounded more natural now. Blitzius then looked at Rainbow Dash and said, Hiya, kiddo. There were a few moments of silence. But then Celestia and Rainbow Dash embraced Blitzius, nearly knocking him over. Oh, Blitzius, where did you go all those years ago? Celestia asked, her voice nearly cracking. Celestia, don't you remember? Blitzius asked. The day I left was the day of our anniversary. I left to go get you a gift. Celestia put her hoof to her forehead and said, Oh, my, me, I remember now. But why were you gone for so long? Celestia asked. Well, well, Blitzius began. Chapter 4 I went out into town to find you something that you deserved. I figured to not get you jewelry or a fancy dress, seeing as how you already have plenty of those things. So I eventually settled on getting you something so simple, beautiful, that you would remember it forever. What was it? Celestia asked. A flower, Blitzius replied. But not just any flower. A sunflower. Now, I'm no florist, but I'm fairly sure that a sunflower was just a plain flower. Sure, it's nice to give to a girl, but it's not really something I'll leave you in awe. I talked to all the florists in town, and they told me that the sunflower would be the ideal thing. Except for the fact that it's rare to find, Blatisse explained. You know, you'd think some pony would notice the flower as tall as a sunflower. But apparently they're hard to find. So I took off, Blitzius continued, and scoured all of Equestria looking for the flower. From Philadelphia to Las Pegasus, I searched. Thing is, I did have to contact some unruly ponies to get a hold of it, including mobsters. Celestia, Celestia gave a small gasp and said, Oh my. Turns out they really like that flower, Blitzius continued, as they had a few hits put out on me. I had to disappear, become someone new, someone unrecognizable, someone unimportant. Luckily enough, almost all the hits were called off. The last one was called off because the hitman got, well, hit. Celestia nuzzled Blitzius in concern, and Blitzius asked, So do you want to see it? Every pony nodded in excitement, and Blitzius stepped aside to show the dome I mentioned earlier to every pony else. 
Blitz just removed the cloth that covered the dome, and whatever was underneath emitted a bright light, which shone less brightly once the cloth was removed. Inside the dome, in a flower pot, was a white flower that had a yellow tint to it, and was actually shining. Guess I stand corrected. Does it always shine so brightly? I asked, somewhat shielding my eyes. Only when you give it a dramatic entrance, Blitzius replied. Oh, Blitzius, it's beautiful, Celestia said. While I was hiding out here with it, I always thought of you when I saw it, Blitzius replied. Celestia smiled and stepped closer to get a better look at the flower. And to think, Blitzius said, turning to me. I was found by a, by a kid who managed to sell me a bushel of apples for eight bits instead of ten. Yeah, Applejack did scold me a bit for this. I smiled and asked, So what will you do now, Blitzius? Well, Blitzius replied, Family's back together. Celestia and Ramadash walked over and stood by Blitzius. I might as well pick up where I left off. Blitzius finished. Aftermath Blitzius returned to Canterlot and ruled alongside Celestia like he did all those years ago. Although technically Celestia would then become a queen, she retained her title, as she preferred to be called princess rather than queen. Blitzius took no title, as this was his preference. Rainbow Dash decided to stay in her cloud castle, but visits her parents almost every week. Greenleaf was honored for finding Blitzius and was given a medal. Luna had a bit of difficulty getting used to being an aunt, used to being an aunt but after a while she accepted it. Every pony else continued on with their lives, but kept the memory that one of their friends was truly happy now, due to the kindness and brains of another friend. End. Thank you all for listening. Um, I will get in the sequel to my alternate ending to Rainbow Factory. There we go. That's what I originally meant to say. Anyway. <clears throat> I'll get that in soon. That's going to both fanfiction and here on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, that'll be in soon. So anyway, um, rate, comment, subscribe, and... I'll catch everyone later. Bro-hoof.